My was going there one saw you from Weather Spun Fat. That was the day. It's August 30th, 2021, and today we're gonna obviously focus on the entire Atlantic tropical hurricane season where we have four disturbances we are closely monitoring. We're gonna talk uh, more in detail about um, tropical storm Ida, which is gonna bring heavy rain all throughout the northeast as well as parts of the southeast as well and we'll also talk about what will likely become tropical storm larry at this time and see if it does have a chance of impacting land but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather costs make sure to like if you like this video make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather costs so let's begin by taking a look at the five day tropical weather outlook from the national hurricane center and you see that we are watching for disturbances we have tropical storm ida which has made landfall in louisiana yesterday at 150 miles per hour and it's just causing extensive devastation to louisiana my hearts go out to all of them over there as i hope you guys stay safe throughout the storm but ida is not done yet as it's going to move up into the northeast coast we also have um another service which currently has a low chance of development at the sun but it's still something we need to monitor we have tropical storm kate which is currently meandering over the middle atlantic and we have um the sermons number one um which has at this point a 90 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation so it is likely to develop into tropical storm larry but let's begin by talking about tropical storm larry and see what the future holds for this tropical this likely potential tropical cyclone so let's take a look at the current water vapor imagery for the sermons number one which will likely become tropical storm larry and you see that um, it, it, there isn't really a centralized area where the convection um, is going on and by convection I mean thunderstorm activity and pretty much tropical cyclones need um, thunderstorm activity around center circulation so it could get stronger and the wind speeds enhance without um, within the center circulation and you see that there isn't really a very centralized area. You see that thunder showers are mostly scattered at this point. We have a little bit of thunder showers developing towards the west side of the storm. However, we also have thunder showers developing in this area as well as the southwestern portion. But I'd assume that the center circulation will develop in one of these blobs of thunderstorm activity. Um, um, where the thunderstorm activity is located. If I were to give a guess, I'd say it will be right here where most of the convection will be occurring because pretty much that's where the pressure will fall to its lowest where the thunderstorm activity is going on. So I do expect this to develop within the near future. It has a 70% chance of developing within the next 48 hours or more. So more likely than not, we will see this develop within the next two days. And if not, it's almost guaranteed it's gonna develop within the next five. So this will likely become Tropical Storm Larry at this time. And it's under a fairly moist environment. You see that there isn't a lot of stable air surrounding this storm. So it's more than capable enough to develop under this environment. And I'd say the wind shear isn't very strong either. So um, as you see that there's a nice outflow going around all sides of this storm at this point going to the southern side as well as the northern side of the storm. Now um, taking a look at what the future holds for the storm, let's first take a look at the GFS model. Um, let's first take a look at the upper level winds over the next several days over this storm and you see that the wind shear, like I said, is very light at this time. So it's of course, gonna promote tropical cyclone development within the next 48 to um, 48 to 36 uh, or 72 hours. However, you do see that the wind shear does increase quite a bit um, actually by the um, on the backs um, right behind the solar pressure system as there's gonna be a little bit of an upper level high developing towards the eastern um, on the eastern side of this storm and that could pose some wind shear however it could be one of those things where the upper level high might be close enough to where the, um to where the wind shear won't really affect it because typically um the strongest upper level winds occur outside of the actual upper level high not really in the inside and if the inside of this upper level high is able to be in a location where it's right over this low pressure system or at least close enough to where it doesn't experience the strong upper level winds then it could be a much more favorable environment for this storm however and it seems like the computer models are leaning towards 
that direction where the upper level high will be at least close enough to not uh, um, impose a lot of wind shear over this storm because you see that by the time we reach the Friday time frame on September 3rd, the upper level high is directly over the lower level center, which means that it's going to be in a very, uh, a very favorable environment for tropical cyclone development as a result of that. And you see that GFS model is expecting um, to for this to strengthen quite a bit potentially into a hurricane where it drops the pressure down to 985 millibars so at that point it becomes a right around i'd say a hurricane or a sh very strong tropical storm so we certainly could see a hurricane in our hands um within the next five days as it's going to be in a fairly favorable environment where the wind shear will likely not be very strong at all now let's take a look at the relative humidity in the upper levels of the atmosphere and if we were to take a look at it right now like i said the atmosphere currently is very moist however it might enter in conditions where the um where it might be a little bit more hostile because you see that um going into um friday september 3rd you see that there's going to be a decent amount of dry air to the north of this however the thing is is that the since there isn't going to be a ton of wind shear or very strong upper low winds it's unlikely that a lot of this dry air will entrain this storm very easily because really the dry air needs wind to push it inside but it isn't really going to get very strong there aren't really going to be any strong upper level winds uh push a lot of this dry air in the center circulation so as a result this should um gradually develop over the next um several days however what the gfs model is currently expecting is for this storm to move northward and the dry air to eventually entrain it as a result of this pressure gradient between this low and this bermuda ridge that's gonna steer a lot of dry air towards this storm um, and it should weaken it eventually if this were to move northward, which is probably the biggest question with this storm is where will this go? The good news is that the GFS model wants to take this northward, which means that it wouldn't affect really land at all. Um, the closest thing it could impact to land is maybe Portugal and Spain, but it's we're still way too far to predict something um that far away or that distant in the future so it's unknown if it'll affect over there um but um as of right now the gfs mall wants to steer this northward within the next four to five days which would certainly be good news because typically when storms move this up north it's nearly impossible for them to move very far enough west to reach the united states we only had there were only a few several occasions where it's happened the most notable i remember was hurricane florence where it was it actually went up pretty far north and miraculously made landfall in north carolina this far up north which is quite rare because it's very difficult for a tropical cyclone to move this far up north and not get steered away by the jet stream or um, an upper level low um, out into the open Atlantic as it made it straight towards the United States. But outside of Florence, it's very rare for a tropical cyclone this far up north to come close to the United States, mainly because, mainly because tropical cyclones are just so close to the jet stream and they're so close to the influence of a lot of troughs moving through. So it's easy for this storm this far up north to move or just get steered out to sea because that's how the that's how it is in the mid latitude cell where the winds move from east to west and it's very difficult for a tropical cyclone for several days to fight off um what typically happens or the strong westerly winds in the middle of mid latitudes of the atmosphere so um it would certainly be good news that the tropical cyclone would move further northward however the European model is disagreeing, which leads to uncertainty when both the main computer models are disagreeing. If we were to take a look at the European model, the European model doesn't want, um, while it does eventually take up northward, you see that in the very distant future, it still wants to take this west. And while it's still far from the United States um, at this point, it's at least notable that the European model wants to take this a little bit more west, but again, um, look at the forecast hour I'm at. I'm at 10 days out, so um, do not take this forecast as very legitimate. Um, 
because there's still a lot of uncertainty and I'd say it's not even something to watch for the East Coast um, just yet because we're still far it's still very uncertain um, at the 240 hour mark and there's still a really good chance that between um, um, between um, where it's located right now and the United States that it gets pulled out to sea by a trough moving through and um, and typically that's been the case like if I were to give a guess I'd say this will if this moves this far up north I'd say it'll eventually move out to sea because that's typically what happens with tropical cyclones that move this far up north this early however um, it, there's still a lot of uncertainty if we were to take a look at a point where the forecast is more certain you see that European model is taking this quite a bit more west than what the GFS model is forecasting and while the European model does move northward it isn't going as far northward to the point where it's unlikely that it could move any further west or impact the land so there's still a lot of uncertainty do not at all um, panic just yet anywhere in the United States or the Caribbean because we still need to wait and see I'd say more likely than not this will get eventually steered out to sea because both the European and GFS mall eventually want to take this up northward um, um, but we just have to wait and see just a lot of uncertainty with this but I, but what's certain is that this will likely become tropical storm Larry and potentially hurricane Larry somewhere in the main development region the question remains where exactly it'll go but I'll make sure to keep you guys updated as we as more um, and as new updates from the computer models come out so um, now let's take a look at the satellite imagery let's take a look at two other disturbances we are watching we obviously have tropical storm Ida which pounded Louisiana and it's moving north um, eastward very fast at this point so um, but we also have this other disturbance which does have a small chance of developing um, and as of right now, there is a decent amount of thunderstorm activity. However, this isn't really expected to, to develop mainly because it's going to deal with a lot of land interaction and um, it won't really, uh, and there's going to be a strong amount of wind shear over this storm to really limit it from developing and to, and it'll limit the energy focusing around center of circulation. So as a result, this is unlikely to develop. However, tropical storm Ida, um, you guys throughout the United States, the eastern half of the United States, need to pay close attention to this because while the storm has made landfall and has weakened significantly from landfall, we could see another heavy rain threat for the northeast. And this is unfortunate because because tropical storm Henri made landfall in right around New London, Connecticut, where I was at only eight days prior to today so a lot of the rivers from the heavy rain that tropical storm Henri brought um they're still very elevated um they're still um close to overtopping their banks so to have another heavy rain threat on top of what tropical storm Henri, Henri brought is definitely something um to be concerned about um because the rivers could be still elevated in your location in the northeast thanks to all the heavy rain Audrey brought just about a week ago so that's certainly something we need to pay close attention to if we were to take a look at what the GFS model is saying with tropical storm Ida of course it's going to weaken because it's going to be over land but there's going to be a little bit of a trough dip um, throughout the United States and it will fastly accelerate the storm but more importantly it will add some barrel clinic influences to enhance the rainfall on the northern side of this storm and um and that certainly will um in and that certainly could bring a much more significant heavy rain threat from the northeast because you see that as this moves northward you see that the yellow becomes more defined and noticeable and it's as a result of the cooler air northward that's forcing a lot of the warmer air that's around the center circulation of ida um upwards and bringing and as a result it allows for a lot of barrel clinic um, convection to occur that enhances a heavy rainfall so as a result a very heavy rainfall that should be expected in a lot of the same areas where that got heavily impacted by tropical storm Henri's rain so this is something you guys certainly need to pay close attention to in the northeast and even the southeast where you see that um, that Mississippi Alabama and a lot of the 
and um, even Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia could get impacted by just very heavy rainfall. Now, taking a look at the um, Futurecast radar to see um, what will, or at least let's first take a look at the track of the storm, you see that it's expecting to move um, northeastward, remain a depression all the way through. Of course, it's over um, land at this point, so it's unlikely that this will develop, that this could at all develop into tropical storm status unless it has some barrel clinic influences. But by that time, it might as well be called a post tropical cyclone. But you see that it's going to remain a depression, but heavy rain should be associated with tropical depression Ida as it moves further northeastward. Now, um, take a look at the um, at the Futurecast radar for this. You see this is where the radar, this is where Ida currently is right now, bringing a lot of thunderstorm activity to Alabama and Mobile, Alabama, as well as Mississippi. And you see a central circulation centered right around Mississippi at this point, the Mississippi River. If we were to continue to move forward with this forecast, um, you're gonna see that um, the rain will extend to Alabama and then by Tuesday afternoon, Tennessee will get involved, Kentucky as well, um, moving a little bit even further than that. By, um, by Tuesday night, you see that it eventually impacts Ohio and then by um, and then by Wednesday afternoon, it eventually reaches the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic states such as New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and there's heavy rain associated with this and it'll be enhanced by the cold air that's gonna to be to the north of it that will enhance the convection and thunderstorm activity a little bit. So we could see just a very heavy rain threat out of this. Now, taking a look at the forecasted rainfall over the next um, several days, um, you see that um, a good area of four to six inches is expected through southern Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey as well, New um, Long Island, and even southern uh, Massachusetts. And even in darker green, two to four inches is a lot of rain, especially for the Northeast, which just got impacted by tropical storm Andre's heavy rain. So heavy rain should be expected. Be prepared for flooding if you're in the flood zone. But more importantly, if you live near a small creek, there's going to be a very high flash flood risk where a moderate chance is expected throughout New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, and, and all these states further southward. So watch out for flash flooding, especially if you're, you live near a creek or if you plan on driving as it's very likely that in poor drain in areas where there's poor drainage, you will see flooding in those areas. So make sure to stay safe from the flooding all throughout the United States um, for um, as tropical storm item moves northward later this week. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather content. And I hope you guys have a good day.